Hi guys, Dodger Bruce here. Um, so it's been raining all day, so it's a Saturday. But what I thought um, I might try and do is, and I can't do much outside, and I haven't got the stuff here till next weekend. We'll try and do the leather interior. Now it's pretty, it's pretty hard. It's pretty, you know, it's like that's not too bad, but that is hard as so i've got some leather conditioner uh, mothers um but what i'm going to do because leather's like skin we all know what it's like when you're hot into a uh into the ocean or into a pool or something you tend to suck up more moisture so i am going to try applying it with a steamer so like i'll borrow this off a uh, a friend, Graham, um, it's just a steam with your little cloth thing on the end that you push it in, but I won't be using that because I've got a cloth, oh, you saw it on my shoulder. Um, but I'm going to steam it so it opens up any pores, if that is possible with something this old, and steam it in. See if it'll melt it, kind of heat it up and push it in, and see if that makes this any softer, and then stops it from stretching so much. Because you notice on the passenger driver's side, the seat's coming, stretching forward, you can see that the underneath from the in the bottom there um this one isn't quite yet it's just got a lot of crap that keeps falling off the roof every time i open it um but we'll see if i can steam it heat it up put that stuff on and then kind of push it in um with a little ah, there it is little microfiber and see if that makes a difference just something to do to see if I don't have to, you know, try, straight away try and get something done with these seats because they're pretty, pretty naff. Uh, so we'll try and do that. Oh, and if someone's got a link now, I tried to find it and I couldn't, I couldn't find the damn link. Um, the rubber seal that goes around the stop brake light, because um, apparently that's why my boot is leaking because of this stupid thing. It's a common problem apparently. The seals just um, shrink over time and. They leak, which is why when you look at oh, this thing doesn't seem to want to go up. Um, because the rubber seal itself seems to be all right, but because that stop light is in here somewhere, well actually exactly there, um, it leaks, which is why the toolbox is all rusty and nothing else, or well, just that area there, because that's leaking right on it. So. If anyone's got a link to where I can get that seal from, leave it in the comments for me. And I might have to get some lights out here. Anyway, let's let's see how we do on this thing. Next day, I uh, had a bit of a storm last night. She uh, came down pretty hard. Luckily, even with the top off, I'm under a garage. It wasn't too bad, but everything else is kind of soaked. Now, I steam cleaned. That's my new number plates. I am not steam clean, but I use the steamer. Um, I went over the seats to open up the pores to try and get the um, liquid, which is uh, that, um, to try and soak in. Uh, I spent way too long on that driver's seat, but um, this is still hard. It's still hard, but it's a little bit. Uh, up the top here Actually, that's not too bad. It's still I think you'd have to do it a fair Fair bit to try and get it in um, It's a lot slippery now a bit greasy, but it's not too bad. That's st I don't know if this is actually Like their vinyl inserts around the leather or inside the leather But not quite I mean it does feel a little bit softer um as I say, with the, the driver's side, I spent way too long on the driver's side. Um, and, uh, yeah, I don't know. It doesn't, it doesn't feel the, any, any softer. I suppose it kind of feels a bit slipperier. Um, I really tried to get it on this, but the seat, the leather is just that old. I don't know. 
especially on the sides here where you can see it's worn. So I'm not sure if that works real well. It kind of made it a little bit softer, but not soft. It's still hard. So you'd probably have to do it multiple times to actually get these seats to come back. Um, which is a bit of a bugger. Um, but they are quite thin too. I mean, you know, there's not a lot of padding in these things. They're quite um, thin. But I did find out that apparently you can get a kit of rails um, and you can put MX, not MX-5, Toyota 86 is the new 86 and BRZs. You can actually fit those seats in. So that will be interesting to find out. But um, yeah, I don't know if that is actually leather or not. Um, I did have this when I was steaming last night trying to get some of this gunk off. It actually worn through. So it's not a it wasn't a dirt mark, it was actually worn. So yeah, what's this? Oh, I think that's because Jeff uh, had his dog in here, so maybe that's from its nails. Although I wouldn't, I would rather think well this was. But um, it's not. It's still quite hard. Although these side, these side ones are actually softer. I don't know why. Oh, maybe because they're not seeing the sun because they're uprights. But that's still kind of squishy. Um, these took pretty well. <sighs> but still not what I'd call soft. But we'll see about this, um, these 86 BRZ uh, seat conversion and see if that, uh, see what they do. Obviously, you lose all your electrics, but I prefer manual because that's instant adjustment and you can adjust it just as much as you want without waiting for the, you know, the electrics to go, which is one more problem. Um, oh look, Jono's here. Look, I've broken this off even more. Damn it. Oh, the screws are actually out. Okay, that's, uh, oops, that's a problem. And there's Jono. Jono has brought a scan tool. So we're gonna, that's, that's a month. Oh, look, it's not even on it now. Ugh. Okay, well. Yeah, that's stuffed. Jono's got a scan tool, so we're gonna go and scan the uh, problems because I do have an airbag light on so we'll see how that goes and uh, see what that comes up with. So we've got ourselves a nifty little snap-on doohickey. Um, I've run the port, port in there with a connector and it's like, what's the name? I don't know. Wi-Fi? Is it Wi-Fi? Bluetooth? Yeah, Bluetooth. Bluetooth. So, oh damn it. I should say that it was my birthday yesterday and uh, John and Sean gave me a birthday present. Rust to riches. Snap on, Dodge. Is that Challenger, Cuda? That's uh, quite cool. Quite cool. So, all right. So we had. Oh, God, get, oh Jesus! I'm too big for this thing. Okay, so we have uh, that inspection thing. And apparently, the lower it goes to that red light, the worse it is. That's where you need to service. So we need to get those lights. Um, all the way back up to here so it hasn't got long before it's really really due for a service so we've got to get them back up here which hopefully we'll do right now and get rid of that stupid uh, airbag light all right what do we need to do push buttons which button i'm pushing buttons oh you're pushing buttons yeah. oh, good because i don't have any buttons here i don't have bugger all so we'll get this thing and you can't see... Typical BMW, often they want to be reset twice before they'll reset anything. Ah, oh, there we go. 143,160 kilometres this thing has done. Unfortunately, my backlight for the actual, um, what's the name, went. Because I was sitting there pressing buttons and whatnot, and I re-zeroed the counter, which is fine. But then that went dull. And I don't know how to bring it back. Or if that's a thing or not. Waiting, 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 waiting. Of course, we'll all be, always be waiting. Repeat, always repeat. Whoa! Okay, it's going up to all these bars. I missed that, and it's got a clock. 
first on something. Yep, just reset it. Now let's scan your engine for codes. And which will be the airbag. Codes. No, airbag system from memory is separate. Oh, okay. Okay, you got an intermittent camshaft. A what? Intermittent camshaft position sensor issue. Um, hopefully yeah. it's just a stored memory and it'll clear it and go away. If it comes back, we'll worry about it. So it could be just the camshaft sensor, position yeah. sensor. That's what, it, that's what it says. Yeah, okay. So a sensor might be gone. Uh, but that's cool. We've got fucking all the lights now and they're all great. Oh, you can't tell. Um, no, the colour doesn't show. But they are, those, those are actual green, like lime green. And you got one red, so that's lime green. But they're all full now, which is excellent. Airbags, continue, continue. Codes. Your passion and pretension, uh, it's probably a wiring issue. Oh, on the seat belt? Yep. Okay. So that's the problem there, is it? Yeah, your pretension on the passenger side. Which I think is those little yellow wires under the seat. That's in there, yep. I can't do anything about that. Oh, do we have any anti lock issues? It's gone off. What? That's. Yeah, it's because I just cleared it. Oh, okay. <laughs> well, there we go. Look at that. Hey! Um, waiting, waiting. I've still got to get rid of that fuel. But now I've got plates, i just got to put rego on it this week. Pay for the rego. Oh, that's a 24 hour clock. You can't see it, there you go, 22. Well, that's wrong. Oh, what time is it, actually? I don't know, this has got American time on it. Uh, 22 is, so what's that? 10.45, so 2200 is 10, because 23 is 11, so that's 10.45. ABS pump, 14 times it's failed, uh, it's had issues. ABS pump? Yep. Ah. That's that the ABS light that comes on occasionally. Oh, so the ABS is actually, okay, so that's the, um, not the, oh, so I've got the ABS pump and the driver's pretension, yeah. passenger's pretension. Oh, for God's sake. Well, it is 23 years old. Okay, let's change that to... Three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. There's the right time. Okay, I didn't know it was on 24 hour, but hey. So, all right. So you've reset that. Do I? When do I have to turn it on and off? Pity you can't see about the illumination. And you know how it doesn't always kick down. Well, the gearbox. Yeah, kind of. You've also got a kick down switch issue. <sighs> Clear it. If it comes back later, we'll worry about it. Yeah. Okay, well right. let's switch her off. Switch her off. One, two, three, three, three. Da, 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 da. Switch it back on. Switch it back on. Switch her off and we're done. And off. That's it? That's it. Okay. So we've cleared everything. I still like to get that stereo going, but I don't know the code for it. If anyone has a specific code, like a shop code that resets everything, that'd be nice, but I don't think these, these do that. They're individual to the actual. I, I think there's a code actually on this body, which means I'd have to actually pull that out to see it, so screw that. Ah, get out of it. Oh, oh, this is going to take some getting used to. In and out. I was going to. Um, do the water today. Oh, I like that shirt, eh? It's a 3XL, so it's going to be real loose, unlike that um, t-shirt you saw me in last night, which is so tight, it was constricting the blood flow. But, uh, yeah, no, that's good. All right, so that's um, the computer stuff done. All right, so that's the codes done. So now, put Reggie on it this week, drive it around, um, and see if those codes come back. Oh, and I need that light. That's right. I need the. Someone give me a link for the um, gasket. I think I already said that before. All right. Cool.
taking the front lip off. Remember I said there was a lot of stuff in there. Uh, underneath. This, this is why I want to take off all the underneath panels. There's just... Uh, crap. Everywhere. Stuck inside the 8 mil or 5 16th screws. There's uh, six of them. Um, two on the actual thinger and then one tying it to the outer panel. So four actually holding it up, one tying it in. But that is why. Just crap growing up inside of it. Yikes. Right, so finished doing the what's name, flushing the system now. That little blue screw, and you see there's a peg beside it. That's just for the header tank. And as you unscrew it, it comes out that little uh where the hell is it? Oh it's further back in. There, there we go, that little um so that's just the header tank. It's not actually for the radiator, because there is none. And the radiator pipe is up there. And that screw was actually facing the radiator. How they managed to put that together, I'll never know. But yeah, so the oh dear. So the, the radiator hose is actually there, which is only three quarters of the way down on the radiator. It's not at the bottom like you'd think, so it's hard to um, flush the radiator when it doesn't actually go all the way to the bottom uh, and then you got this stupid pipe which I've taken off the cover and this is the induction cowl which comes through a little plastic very small plastic what's the name uh, I'll probably just get there <laughs> I haven't had because it's got two plastic clips that you just can't get out unless you got really really long nose pliers which I don't I mean it's short nose and they just clip in there but that's the intake. We can see you've got a three inch pipe, but it has to come in through that first. That's kind of ridiculous. And then it just has this little clamp, which is a plastic, uh, oh, I've got the name of it now, like they use on V bands on turbos. It just clips in there and it's just hinged. So you just put it over and click, and that holds that onto that once you screw it on. Same with that end. It just, well, that one actually screws in because it's got a coil inside here um, and you can actually kind of screw it in there uh, and that's the intake into the actual air box so this just lies across the top got a big indentation a lot of crap that was under there I kind of washed out but then you can get to your radio hose which I said is only three quarters of the way down which is uh, kind of strange but top radio once that's pipes off you can get to the top radio hose undo that and I just let the hose um, flush i'll put it into this end uh into this hose where is it yeah that hose there twisted it up put the garden hose into there and let it flush out and let it run through the system and then come out there and out again and it wasn't too bad it must have been just gunk in the in the actual overflow or the radiator but that got flushed out so it's kind of clean water now so eventually i'll do the um remake and put red or blue or pink or whatever the hell colors of these things yeah, so that just sits in there which doesn't give you a lot of room yeah like that for you know, air there are some I have noticed there are some um, tips and tricks uh, one of them is do not use K&N anything because yeah it's just not as good even the oil ones uh, it dries up and it just yeah the bits and you can get a good K&N I guess but there's other things whether it's a panel or a cone just not really crash hot so once the oil goes, then the filaments start to it starts to just break up, which can and shouldn't, but it depends on how much you want to spend on it. Um, other one, how the guys have got opened that up, so it's a three-inch pipe all the way into the airbox, and then done something here, so you still have this entrance. I don't know, but she's flushed. It's flushed, flushed is. So there. Yeah, so that's enough for today, I think. I gotta go and get some things. I still gotta figure out. I think they're just those screws are just screwed in for the number plates. So 
I don't think I have enough. Oh, that's what I was going to do, wasn't I? <laughs> now I remember. Um, and yeah, headlight refresh. I've got, I was thinking of doing something. Apparently, if you get the old acetone and steam that into a vapour and put it over your headlight or steam it onto your headlight, that actually fixes it as well. But you know, steaming acetone is a volatile liquid. It's likely to go bang. So apart from the, what's the name? Now that John has cleared all my, what's the names? I have all green lights and no warning lights come up. Look at them, everything, gone. That is awesome. That is awesome. So I'm happy with that. Although I smashed this, this has actually come out now. Oops. Oh, what do you expect? Not too fussy on end. We'll have to take that to put a proper roll bar in there anyway. If anyone's got the uh, wrecking one and it's got the bits that spot weld in there, because this runs the top half there, but it's the second half that you need, and they're spot welded in. I need those bits if anyone's wrecking one to Australia, um, or in Australia, preferably. And then I can get the roll bar to suit, and then I can put a wind thingy in there to stop my, uh, well, I mean, it's not like I've got a lot of hair. But I think it's the beard. I mean, no one wants to be driving along the road and going, going like this, which I think is probably what it will do. And that's annoying. Because although I trim and, and oil and grease my beard and whatever else, it's coarse like pubes. You don't want that running all over your face. Doesn't not a good look either when you drive along the BMW and you've got this sticking up here. Yeah. So that will do it. So that, uh, I think, will do enough for the for this week next weekend hopefully hopefully apparently it's another long weekend although we can't go anywhere because of restrictions so i might be able to get this on the hoist don't know if we get the keys to actually go into Jono's work to actually do that so i was planning on trying to get this paintwork scuffed up this weekend but they kind of turned to crap after yesterday's migraine but yeah so um and I'm glad I got all that crap from out in there. That was that was shocking. That was scary. And I did find a lot of more grass growing up there. Long, well, basically all those bits around the ramp were all sitting up inside of it. So definitely needs to go on a hoist and get all that cleaned out. But I'm also hoping to take the body kit off um, and maybe the side um, side quarters. And yeah, so the bottom sill and side quarters, unbolt those while it's up in the hoist and see what else is kind of we can clean up and just, just give it a general clean up, you know. But that'll do it. So thanks to all subscribers. Uh, if you can subscribe, please. I'm almost at 100. I think I'm at 92. So I need that uh, extra couple just so I can get on the 100 and past the 100 mark so I can uh, change the bloody URL. So thanks to any, uh, if you subscribe, thanks to all those people, um, I'd, I'd say, and the likers, um, Mr. Harney, thank you for the, being the first one on the last video, <laughs> the last video, um, but yeah, you, you said I had to buy a registered running car, so I did, you didn't say what it had to be like, but it runs, better now, won't be even better or betterer once I get the, uh, New spark plugs in and a slight tune and just running good fuel through it. That might actually work well too. That's next weekend. All right, cheers, people. Thank you very much, and we'll catch you later.